Just try to, okay, okay, I think I see, I think, okay, so, the, okay, so this, yeah, mm, okay, okay, right, okay, so I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. The Drake is up here. That's, that's what's gonna be, that's, that's the thing that's gonna, that's, okay, so the, yeah, mm, okay. All right, fine. Okay. God. This is where we fight the Drake. It's... No? Oh. Oh, oh, I know, I know, I know, Bell Gargoyle. Weakness, death, oh, gee. Fucking thanks, Greg. Some of these motherfuckers, I think two of them are gonna come to life and attack me. And this, by the way, uh, once again, assessing the area for the boss fight, once again, we have a situation where I'm allowed to enter a space, I'm allowed to look around. Oh, I saw that health bar. You guys, you're the ones. Bell gargoyles, the bell tower is up there. Once again, I'm allowed to enter a space, I'm allowed to look around, I'm allowed to orient myself, get a feel, f feel for the place, be filled with an inexplicable sense of dread by all these fucking gargoyles everywhere. And then I assume as I go forward, <laughs> I'm gonna trigger these assholes. Oh, I get a cutscene! Oh, thank god. Thank God I get a cutscene. And yeah, looking at them, since I now have a brief moment to get to grips with what they look like, they do identify themselves apart from their gargoyle brethren by being, first of all, armored, which doesn't seem to be a feature on the other gargoyles, and having these weapons and these axe tails. So everything about them, besides being, you know, clearly different from the other gargoyles, everything about them also says that they are more aggressive, that they are more offensive, more liable to attack. Okay, so I don't have to fight both of them at the same time. That's something. Oh, these, oh, these, bo these boys. These boys are real. Oh, good lord. He has a tail attack. Of course he has a tail attack. It would be nice to be able to get rid of that tail attack. Ah, ha, 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 tail attack, which, with which he can attack from behind. Good. Ow. Okay, Bell Gargoyle. Nice wings on this guy. Again, comparing him and contrasting him with the Asylum Demon, these are functional wings. These wings look like they can actually fly him around, and which indeed they can. How much am I going to have to hit his tail to cut it off, I wonder? Ow. 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 Stop that! And by the way, interestingly enough, you can see the green sheen that are on his weapons. That's um, in, in a lot of European architecture, uh, ornamentation, especially on, you know, gorgeous, important buildings and on sculptures and statues tend to be made out of bronze. And bronze, when it's exposed to the elements for long enough, actually goes green. And I think that's kind of the reason for why this dude looks the way he does. Beautifully, though, like, the enemies I've been fighting up until now, including the mini-bosses, have done a pretty gorgeous job of preparing me for this guy mechanically, because, like, not, th not that I'm not got my heart rate up right now, but I've learned to not keep my shield up all the time, ow, and I have learned to circle around and time my blocks. So I'm actually doing okay right now. I I'm sure he's going to kill me. but I really want to cut off his fucking tail. Ow. His range is impressive, but it's actually not that difficult to manage. And again, the wings as a piece of the character design help identify to me that this guy can reposition himself quickly. Like they help showcase, ow. Oh, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. There's two health bars now. This guy breathes fire? Oh, find, find me in the, the Alps. Alps. <laughs> oh, God. It's not like his f bro over there gets damaged by the fire, I see. So, ideally, I suppose the strategy here is to have finished off one before you have to deal with the other. Oh, I'm so fucking dead. I am, I am what in the business is called super dead. Eh? Let me heal at least you... Cretans. <laughs> yeah. 
So, this is much more in the spirit of what I had in mind uh, when I started this series, in that it's probably gonna take me, like, a few tries to deal with these motherfuckers. And I am committed to the idea of cutting off the guy's tail, because motherfucker that tail was annoying. That was more the kind of boss fight I thought I was gonna be facing when I started Dark Souls. I know his attack patterns now, this is so easy all of a sudden. Yeah! Great! That's 10,000 souls I just lost. It occurs to me that I never actually did check was at the bottom of these elevators. I just kind of ran out. Whatever it is, it's a long way in the opposite direction of where I'm supposed to be going. I'm supposed to be going up uh, to find the bell. That's the mission at the moment. Oh. Oh, is this? Try down. I'm back at Firelink Shrine. Really? Bonfire, please. Bonfire, 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 bonfire. Bonfire! Uh, I want to reverse hollowing. I want some more HP for that goddamn fight. That's what reversing hollowing does, right? It gives you more HP. Oh, what the fuck? Dark Spirit has invaded. I know what that means. That means... There you are. I see you. <laughs> oh, good. Is he just gonna stand there gesturing at me? Because I tried to stab him and I did no damage. Bye. Some people in the comments did advise me to maybe play offline. Um, <laughs> which seems to have been sensible advice. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, I, I just googled it and apparently this, as long as I'm human, I can be invaded. That's the way that works. All right, that was why. Okay, so I'm just gonna be hollow. <laughs> That's just what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be hollow unless I need, have some specific need to not be hollow. Wait. Wait, do I need to be human? in order to summon dudes to help me? Can I have Slayer help me with these guys? Because I, I can't reverse my hollowing right now. Okay, well, we're not just not waiting at all on this, are we? Hey! Success! I imagine it's just gonna piss him off, but... And I'm dead. <laughs> Uh, well, at least I managed to cut a tail off this time. That's something. <sighs> Here we go again. Hey, buddy. How you doing? So you got your tail back. Would have been nice if you didn't get to keep that. Nope. Doesn't hurt them any more than my normal weapon. Ow. Ow. Damn it. I think it's fair to say that this is probably the first proper episode um, of this particular video series, whereas the previous two bosses, one of them I beat in a couple of tries because it's the first boss of the game and it's meant to be beatable in a couple of tries. The second boss I beat in a single try because I got some cheaty cheaty little sneak information from a dude with a soapstone who told me to use lightning and lightning turned out to be just really just very good at killing the second boss of the game, but this time... Oh, this time around, the game has decided to kick my ass, and it is largely succeeding. So this is, uh, <laughs> this is essentially the version of this video series that I always wanted to make, and I have to say, careful what you wish for, boys and girls, because... Honestly... I... I'm getting frustrated. I... I... I it took me a while to get back to recording, like, this is... What you're seeing right now is gonna be edited together from a bunch of different recordings um, at different times on different days as I struggle uh, to, to deal with this boss. And it is frustrating, but it's frustrating in exactly the way that I was that I was really looking for. Do you wanna maybe not parry for a sec? Stop not letting me cut your fucking tail off. All right. 
so the thing that happened there, I think, uh, and the thing that happened there is I forgot to pick up my uh, previous corpse. That's the thing I should have remembered to do. Anyway, time to die again. Hey, buddy. How have you been? Just kidding, I don't care. As we've talked about before, these guys are very... They're bronze, essentially. That's, what, that's what's going on with them, is that... Ugh. I get a feeling that Halbert guy over here is gonna use that staggering... <sighs> it's an opportunity! <clears throat> okay, lesson number two, stay the shit away from the edges. And by the way, the differences between the two gargoyles are kind of interesting to note, because the first gargoyle is much more heavily armored. He's got a lot more armor going on on his wings. His wings in general seem to be larger and more impressive. Um, whereas his lesser brother... Ow! Really shouldn't have done that. Is much more lightly armored and seems to be more... Ow! How the fuck am I supposed to do anything about that? Oh, they can both breathe fire. That's good. That's great. So long as they have all that fire going on, I just cannot... All right, let's take <laughs> another run at those gargoyles. I have spent some time off screen grinding a little bit, gaining some stats, getting slightly stronger, becoming able to use weapons like the halberd, like the winged spear, uh, acquiring a short bow, changing up my armor a little bit. I now have, uh, I have a full set of chainmail armor, some of which was not as helpful as I was hoping it would be, like, for instance, the leather gauntlets, which are heavier than the night gauntlets, and just... just worse... in most ways. Um, but nonetheless, the... chain helm, which has decent fire resistance, the chain leggings, which have very decent fire resistance, all of which, alongside the heater shield here, should help me a little bit when it comes to dealing with these goddamn... gargoyles. Oh, I also went on a, a major little exploration quest. I decided to explore the Firelink Shrine some more, and I found a sad lady sitting in a cage downstairs who made my Estus Flask more powerful, which was nice. That's what the Firekeeper's soul was for, apparently. And I found an elevator that led down into some ruins. I think they were called New Londo Ruins. I decided, I think, wisely to not explore those too thoroughly because that seemed to be an area where I really wasn't supposed to go yet. Uh, I accidentally used the master key to unlock a door. I'm pretty sure I wasn't supposed to unlock yet either, which led into the Valley of Drakes. That sounds like a place that's full of, of well, drakes, as it were, which I suspect I am not strong enough to fight at this point in the game. Another run at the damn Bell Gargoyles. Now with somewhat better stats, somewhat better weapons, maybe some kind of a chance of actually getting these guys dead. Um, although I would not necessarily hold my breath. Let's go and die. Sup, fucker? I'm here to beat you to death with a part of your own body. I got maybe a little too overexcited there. So at this point, pretty much the plan is just to run at the fucking gargoyles and keep running at them and keep trying and keep trying to figure out strategies and keep attempting to kill those bastards until I succeed which may admittedly take quite a while out. Uh, uh, uh. See, yeah, that's the thing I've been suspecting about this guy is that he's probably fairly easy to deal with if you can get in close because so long as he has the distance on you, that cone is just gonna fuck your shit up, man. I didn't have the stamina to block all of that, but I also didn't have the health to survive not blocking it. I do like the recontextualization of these guys, though, in that these wretches are sort of the easiest enemy you face in the early game. Like, they, they can barely do anything so long as you have any any semblance of control over your character. You're able to deal with them. Like, they're, they're basically, they're super easy to deal with most of the time. But then... All of a sudden, you face them in this massive group, which, if if you fail to keep control, like, if you don't funnel them into a corridor, they're gonna surround you, and they're gonna hit you so much that you get staggered and overwhelmed, and you get hacked to pieces, even though, theoretically, they're a really weak enemy. And I thought that was, that was kind of a cool moment. Good luck, yeah, thank you. 
Ow. That tail slap is really... Just the absolute worst. Yes, I got his tail. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. All right, fine. Fuck. Fucking hell. Don't want to die now. I've been doing so well. No, uh, no, 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 no. I am not going over the edge of this fucking roof right now. Oh, I'm gonna get roasted. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the increased fire resistance made me survive that a lot longer than I did. But getting cornered with my back to the wall there was... Like, once they both started deciding to throw fire at me, that was pretty much just the end of the story. Uh, I haven't been able to talk much about their character designs, or rather, I feel like I've kind of exhausted what there was to say about their character designs as it is. But I suppose the last thing that there is to say is something general about the evolution of the character designs of the enemies over the course of the game so far. You start out fighting wretched undead, like just corpses that are like barely alive, and not just in the undead asylum, but also in like the, the undead burg, um, and the undead parish, and, and wherever else you may go. Mostly the enemies you're fighting are just weak, emaciated, kind of just screwed up, disgusting, half-rotted corpses that sort of, they can't talk, they can barely express themselves, they can barely do anything, and they really aren't a threat or or a problem unless you get overwhelmed by numbers, um, which is kind of the thing about them. But then as you progress, as you get closer to the parish in particular, as indeed we saw with the with the mini-bosses that I had to deal with in this church, um, you get undead that are more and more powerful, and your first indication of that is that black knight that you run into um, and in the undead burg who's entirely optional to fight, but who you can get brutally murdered by if you so choose. And your second indications start to be that, first of all, the these wretches kind of fall away as the primary enemy, and you start to run into people who are wearing more armor, who seem to be sort of better preserved, who have some tactics like these firebombing assholes on the roofs, and, you know, dudes wielding crossbows, and people arranged in battle formations that look a little bit more like not exactly, you know, they don't exactly look like not disgusting corpses or anything, but they look sort of more coordinated, like there's a little bit more thought going on behind what they're attempting to do. And then eventually you start running into, well, what you run into in, 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 in the cathedral here, you start running into undead who are, yes, still entirely hollowed out, but they are also wearing most of their old gear. They are aggressive, they're fast, uh, they're clever, they can they can parry you, they can dodge you, they have, like, sensible weapons tactics, and you sort of get the sense that you're running into undead of a higher and higher level, or at a lower and lower level of debilitating corruption, at the very least. And that's sort of interspersed with enemies like the giant boar, uh, <laughs> with which I had so much trouble, um, which is literally, it's just a giant boar. Like, it's a boar in armor that's kind of difficult to deal with, but it's nonetheless, it's just a giant boar. And it's a healthy boar. Like, it doesn't seem to be diseased. It doesn't seem to be sort of falling apart at the seams. It doesn't seem to be slow or, you know, particularly decrepit or anything. It seems to be just a completely, just a big motherfucking boar who's entirely healthy, covered in armor, and who hates you. Um, and in, and that boar kind of echoes a little bit back to the Taurus demon, which also just seems to be this animal that is perfectly healthy and, and dealing very well with the world. Thank you very much. And where the heck do those Estes flasks keep coming from? Dealing very well with the world, perfectly fine. It sort of, it sort of signals a slow shift as you move from a conception of the world that is entirely about this disease and decrepitude towards something that's more like a world that still has a functioning ecosystem, a world that still has native inhabitants. And you kind of culminate with the bell gargoyles there because they are, simultaneously, they seem to be made of humanity in the sense of they are, like, they're gargoyles. They, they are things that humans make and put on top of buildings because that's what humans are like. But also, uh, they are, they seem animal, like, much like the boar, much like the Taurus demon, they seem less... Ow. That was a mistake. Too aggressive. They seem less like sort of corrupted filth and more like these things that just kind of are part of the world in a way that the undead are not really. 
which I think is also, like, from what little I know of Dark Souls lore that I've sort of absorbed, is that the whole thing about humanity and humans just being, like, around at all is sort of supposed to be kind of an unnatural thing that's only happened because of some fire magic or something like that. Um, which I thought is, was quite an interesting concept of, of taking humanity and making us sort of this unnatural aberration. That's not really... Oh, God, I'm gonna die here. That's not really supposed to be there. But which is sort of there just by a fluke of, of someone managing to make it happen through sheer force of will. And now that that era is kind of over, humanity is, is, is finding itself reframed in... as being this sort of undead, diseased, broken half-species of a thing that's sort of barely clinging on to existence, while the air quotes natural inhabitants of the world, these motherfuckers, and the demons and, you know, giant armored boars that hate you, begin to take over again. At least, at, at this, like, again, I don't know much about Dark Souls lore at all, so it, it's the sensation I get from my vantage point here. I'm being corralled again, and it's a bad scene, because once they both start swinging or firing or whatever they're doing at me, like, if I'm taking both of their attacks at the same time, my stamina will deplete. I can't block them all, and I certainly can't dodge them. Oh, bugger. 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 Bugger, 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 bugger. Okay, better. Better, better. No, not better. Bad. By the way, um, something we touched upon with these two gargoyles earlier when I was first trying to describe them is that the younger brother, this, this, the latecomer to the fight, is already damaged. Like, he's already lost his tail, his wings are kind of useless and broken, kind of like more in the vein of the Asylum Demon. Um, and he's not... He, he just, in every way, he looks less complete, less powerful than, than, his, than his stronger brother, which is an interesting bit of visual communication, I have to say. Okay. Which, I mean, maybe that's a gameplay hint that you're really supposed to, once the little asshole comes into the fight, you're really supposed to attempt to go for him, because he is by far the easier target. Although I have got to say, nothing about this so far has been easy. Okay, almost dead. Almost got one of these assholes down, and once one of them is down, I know I can deal with the other. Almost, 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 almost. I am not going to get cocky. I swear to God, I am not going to get cocky. And I'm not going to get impatient. And I'm not going to get over aggressive. Because once, the second I do, see, that's what happens. I'm running out of healing, so this, the pressure is on that I can't keep taking chip damage like this <clears throat> while trying to find an opening to land the last hit on this asshole. But there we go. There we shit fucking go, you motherfucker. You're dead now. You are dead now, and I'm not dead. Do you know what that means? That means your brother's dead, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm coming for this bitch. I am coming for this bitch. I am coming for you. Ha, 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 ha. Ha. What are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do now? Not so tough without your boy. Not so tough without your fucking boy. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking do it. I'm gonna kill this motherfucker. Suck it. Suck it. Suck all of it. I don't know what it is, but you can suck it, and you can suck it so hard. <laughs> oh, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it. I get it. I get it now. I I understand why people like Dark Souls. Yeah, that is satisfying. That is really satisfying. Praise the sun. Yes, motherfucker, praise the sun. And I didn't even have to get Solaire in here to help me out. Now, here comes an era of raging paranoia that something is going to kill me and take away the 10,000 souls that I just won. Like, I'm gonna fall off a roof, or I'm gonna do something inc incredibly stupid. I want to read. Thank you. Try jumping. <laughs> oh, good try, my anonymous internet friend. But that is not going to work on...
Well, that was anticlimactic. I'm going to throw this over to Future Skyen, who's going to have to attempt to cut together five, six, seven, eight hours of footage. I don't know how long it took me to do all this shit. And say something sensible about the bell gargoyles. Good luck, man. G. Thanks, Past Skyen. Hello, this is Future Sky, and in this segment, I like to try and dive a little bit deeper into the character design of the bosses I've just been fighting. Now, because the gargoyles were able to kill me over and over again, I had plenty of time in combat to analyze and talk about their character designs as I was relating to them, and I think I did a pretty decent job of covering most of the basics, which means in this segment, I'd like to go a little bit wider and talk not just about the bell gargoyles, but about all the bosses of Dark Souls I've been facing so far and what they're telling me as a fresh Dark Souls player about the world of Lordran. The first boss is the Asylum Demon, and as we talked about in that video, it's this big bloated, corrupted, diseased, disfigured, unnatural horror of a thing that seems to have sprung fully formed from someone's worst nightmare. It is something that is plainly not supposed to exist. It is supernatural. It is it is not part of, of the natural world, it was something evil that was given form and put into the world where it spends most of its time just tormenting everything because it is an embodiment of pure evil for no reason except evil. The second boss of the game, however, is the Taurus Demon, and where the Asylum Demon is all supernatural horror themed, the Taurus Demon is much more animalistic, it's much more naturalistic, it, it looks a lot like it's just an animal that happens to live in the area. Uh, where that you entered and sees you and decides, oh, hey, that looks like a meal, and so it attacks you. It's covered in fur, it is muscled, it looks healthy, it looks vital, and while certainly it looks dangerous, and I'm sure that from the perspective of realistic biological science, it is an impossible creature, it nonetheless represents a very different thing than the Asylum Demon. Where the Asylum Demon is supernatural, the Taurus Demon is natural. It is part of the world. It's, it seems like a thing that could plausibly be the apex predator of some kind of fictional ecosystem. And so we get to the gargoyles, and a gargoyle is a very specific thing in architecture. Um, you might know this already, but the, uh, a gargoyle is a specific form of an architectural feature that's called the grotesque, and that's all those animal figures and supernatural creature figures that you see carved on the sides of old buildings. They're called grotesques when they're just for decoration, but when they are for something for a specific purpose, they're called the gargoyles. A gargoyle is essentially an ancient version of the gutter around a roof and the downpipe that collects rainwater and leads it away from the building. Rainwater is dangerous to old buildings because it can get into the mortar, it can get into the bricks, and it can erode them away and cause a lot of damage to a building over time. So architects very early on, as early as ancient Egypt figured out that if you have some kind of figure, some kind of feature on the building that can direct rainwater away from the sides of the building, you can increase the lifespan of the building and, and cut down on maintenance costs. And because it would kind of look ugly to just have a big thing sitting on the side of the building spouting rainwater, they often shaped them into different animal shapes. And in Europe, which is very much what Dark Souls is coded after medieval Europe, that often took the shape of the gargoyle. From its very early conception, it's very much a man-made thing. It's this thing that was invented to serve a incredibly practical purpose, but which we then customized into animal shapes because that's what humans tend to do. We tend to get creative about things. And once we got creative about them, we started to make up legends about them. And I'm just gonna read something pretty much off Wikipedia here. That There's a French legend that sprang up around um, the name of a saint called Saint Romanus, who was from the 600s. Um, it, it relates to the city of Rouen in France, where there was a monster called Gargoyle, or Gagouille, uh, depending on, on your pronunciation, which was sort of a typical dragon monster. It had huge bat-like wings, it had a long neck, and it had the ability to breathe fire. And much like the legend of the dragon of St. George, essentially it ends with a saint riding in, and with the power of Christ on his side, he defeats the monster. And they try to burn the body of this monster, but its head um, will not burn. The head and the neck will not burn because it's been full of fire for so long that it simply cannot be burned. So what they do instead is they take the head and they mount it on the side of the newly built church in, in the town to scare off evil spirits and use it for protection. 
And that's one of the legends that is associated with gargoyles. And there's all kinds of other different folklore associated with gargoyles, whereby they are meant to protect the building from evil spirits, or they're meant to educate the public about the, the horrors of hell should they lapse in their faith. All kinds of Christian myth-making is associated with all kinds of folklore. But the thing it all comes down to is that gargoyles from top to bottom, from their mythology to their practical conception are man-made. They are representations of human ideas, human concerns, human needs are what form the basis of what gargoyles are. And that to me was interesting because that means we have a trinity of bosses now. First, the unnatural, supernatural forces of evil, the, the horrifying demons from other dimensions that are coming into the world to destroy you. That's the first boss you face. The second boss you face seems to represent a kind of the nature of Lordran, just the nature and the flora, and uh, the nature and the fauna, rather, of Lordran. I'm getting my biological terminology mixed up. Just the natural creatures of the world, which are also aligned against you, that also want you dead. And then finally, you get to the roof of a church, a man-made building, a place that, if anything, is supposed to represent sanctuary and safety, and the church itself, its gargoyles, its architectural features, turn against you. So as a player of Dark Souls, as a fresh player who doesn't know that much about the world of Lordran just yet, what I've been told so far is that supernatural evil will attack me on my journey, that natural creatures will attack me on my journey, but also that human society, human institutions, human buildings, human constructions will be attacking me on my journey, that everything, everything in Lordran is aligned against me, maybe for different reasons, maybe for, for, from different motivations, but I am not safe anywhere. That 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 I am I'm being attacked by supernatural forces, by natural forces, and by man-made forces. The church itself turns against you. That to me kind of struck me that despite my ostensible mission in this game, I think being to save the world, like to restore the fire from the Lord of Cinder, or whatever the case may be, despite me ostensibly being the good guy here, not only am I attacked by the giant big armor knight in the chapel, I'm also attacked by the magic caster guy who carries around what looks to be almost like a, a um, what the heck is that called in English? Not a chandelier, but a, but, but a, but a candlestick. That's the thing I was looking for. Who, who carries this thing that looks like a candlestick, who has this ornamented armor that almost like makes him look church-like. The attendants of this church, like the, the Templar defender with the grand shield and the priest-like figure who's able to call upon magic and, and divine protection to strike me down, they both turn on me, and when they fail, the building itself attempts to kill me. So in terms of communicating the world of Lordran to the player, that's... I think that's very effective. Now, again, I don't know that much about the lore of Dark Souls. Maybe we're going to learn later on that, oh no, the gargoyles are actually unnatural hell demons as well that just live on old human buildings because of some reasons, maybe, but from my perspective as a player, like from my perspective of ignorance of the world, what I've been told so far is to trust nothing, that, like that nowhere is safe, that nowhere is sacred. This is a church which is supposed to be a sacred space, a sanctuary, but even here, everything, everything from the ground I walk upon to the creatures that live there are aligned against me. Anyway, I think that's about all I have to say about the Bell Gargoyles. Now, if you like this video, there's a like button down below and a subscribe button that you can use to help the channel out. And if you are able, and if you're so inclined, you can also go to Patreon and support me there with whatever. Like, anything that you want to support with or that you can spare is super helpful. Uh, you get access to the channel Discord. And you get to vote on future videos and you get some other perks. Uh, you can order commissions of either art or videos from me with, that you can save up with your Patreon contributions over time. All the details are going to be on the Patreon. So if you want to do that, thank you very much. That, that, that would be very nice of you. Now, down below the video, you will also see something that looks a lot like a dislike button. But in fact, it's not a dislike button. It's a grotesque that I have carved into the side of my YouTube channel in order to ward away evil spirits and sort of protect the YouTube channel from dangers like evil demons that might come down and try to destroy me and also protecting it very usefully from rainwater. So, I mean, you can try and click on it, but you shouldn't really because it just it just it just causes erosion and wears away at it. And nobody really wants that. Uh, it's just a nice decoration. doesn't have any real function. Don't even bother clicking on it. I don't even know why I brought this up. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.